Hi friend, welcome to Unexplainable Stories of Hope and Healing. I am your host, Erica Wiggenhorn, and today we are going to talk about hope and healing for the mill spouse. If you don't know what that is, that is the military spouse, um, a hard, tough call on any woman's life. Um, and I'm delighted to have my friend Shana here with you today. She has been a mill spouse for over a dozen years. She has moved countless times. Her husband has been deployed twice, and she is going to share a little bit of hope and hopefully some healing and practical tips about getting through this crazy mill spouse life. So, Shayna, thank you for being here thank you for with us me. today. Um, tell, us a, tell us a little bit about life as a mill spouse. So, you've been doing this gig for 12 years, over 12 years. Um, what, are, what are some of the hardest things about it? Um, so, we have four children, um, three boys. Their ages are 10, 7, 5, and then my daughter is 3. And so, the hardest part is relationships. Um, they're older now, and we've moved three times. And you make friends, and then you have to move from them, and changing schools, and fitting in. And so, definitely the toll it takes on them. They're very resilient, but just seeing um, and trying to encourage them, you know, to get out there and to make friends. And then me as well, um, definitely as a military spouse, you have to get out there. You have to, you know, go to the spouse's club or mops or Bible study, um, the chapel, any of those places to, um, you know, to meet people and to find friends. Yeah. Um, I make jokes because my husband, um, he moves and gets to his squadron and he's working with people day in and day out. And so he has instant friends and I tell him he doesn't have to try to find friends. He just, yeah. they're there. Um, but for me and for the kids, we actually have, have to try and have to build those, you know, relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's probably pretty exhausting at times. Yeah. I, I can only imagine, um, in, yep. in that process of, um, you know, just feeling that loneliness, feeling that I, I got to start all over again, um, or even just some of the hard things about having a husband gone for six months, um, share with, tell us some stories, give us some examples of how in that, those hard times you really saw Jesus just show up and remind you that he was with you? So um, when my husband was deployed the second time, um, I was driving down the road coming from a doctor's appointment and my tire blew out and I just heard a sound. It was just a click and I didn't realize that it was flat and I got to the guard shack um, on base and the guard told me that my tire was on the rim. It was completely flat and there's a firestone on base and so I went straight there and um, just seeing God in the details not only did they have you know my tires in stock I actually needed a second one um, it was my back tire for the back because um, that one they said was about to blow as well it had damage to it um, I didn't have to have my daughter because she was already with the babysitter and my boys were at school and so just seeing God's hand on those situations that you know, you might take for granted of like, oh, it was just coincidental, but just being able to look back and see like, God knew I was going to have, you know, yeah. a blow up tire and, you know, the guard shack told me about it and the um, repair shop just ha happened to have, you know, them in there. And sure. so, yes, of course it's stressful because it's unexpected expense, but seeing God, you know, in every mm -hmm. step of the way, um, is really cool. I mean, and sometimes in that moment you don't see it, but being able to look back, um, yeah, it was and just see a that. real. It was a tangible reminder that he was going to take care of you, right. even though your husband wasn't there right. with you. God had not left you, right? And he was going to handle all these unexpected things as they came up. I right. love that. 
I yeah, love we that. say um, it's a joke in the military community about the deployment curse, and it's when they go for training, which is a TDY, or when they deploy and just all the thing, everything breaks. It seems like <laughs> so my washing machine broke. Um, and I just finished the laundry. So we had all clean clothes. So we were able, you know, to get through and Amazon Prime had, you know, the piece I needed. It was this little striker and it was a quick fix of just two screws to replace it. Um, but just the little things like that, right. you know, yeah. um, my kids were having, you know, a really hard time, mm -hmm. you know, understanding, you know, things with the deployment and I needed a timeout. So I put a movie on for them and, um, I was really upset, so I went in my closet and I opened my Bible and I was just crying out to the Lord. Um, my husband and I were having a lot of marriage issues at the time, and um, he had, you know, just recently left, so I was still dealing with all the, you know, emotional and change of, you know, being a single parent, you know, to four kids and all the responsibilities, you know, on me. And I would, I was crying, literally crying. Um, out to God and he just met me exactly where I needed to be or where he needed to be. Um, and the verse um, that it was on was, he will never leave or forsake me. And I was feeling so lonely in that time of not being able to find anyone, you know, to relate to my, or what I thought, you know, to relate to my experiences because no one wants to share, you know, about marriage troubles. Sure. Um, and so just, I felt so alone and that I had no one to talk to, but God was right there. He was my comfort and he was my strength. And, you know, I was able yeah. um, to get through it. Yeah. And he used the scripture to just come alive to you in that moment. Absolutely. For the woman out there who is, maybe she's getting ready to face a deployment or maybe she's sitting there thinking, I think Shayna, I feel like Shayna is sitting in my living room right now uh, knowing exactly what I'm feeling. I'm, I'm feeling lonely. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling like my marriage is not good. I'm feeling like, you know, my kids are more than I can take. Um, I feel like everything in my house is breaking, you know, whatever, it, whatever is going on with her. But she's, this mill spouse life is, it's up to here, right? Yes, absolutely. What encouragement would you offer her today? So my suggestion would be um, to have soul care and to open up your Bible and read. And if you can't, you know, read because you're too busy and you don't have time to sit there, you know, and read a whole chapter or book, um, find a verse that speaks to you or that you hear, you know, on your local radio station and play Christian music in the car when you're running your errands and going different places, but just find the word, no matter where it is, if it's a verse on your mirror or post it somewhere in your house, um, just find that. Yeah. So really what I hear you saying is the number one thing that really gets you through this mill spouse life is Jesus yes. and your faith. Yes. And without that, you would, you're not sure how you'd make it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All um, glory to him. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit, give, give the woman, so you, you talked about soul care. Mm -hmm. um, give her some practical tips. How does she, you know, how, how can she keep her marriage strong? Because communication across the miles in two different worlds is really tough, right? It's, it's tough enough when you're in the same house. Right, right. It's really tough, right? Right. How can she keep her marriage strong? How can she, um, you know, find what she needs to sustain life as a single mom? What are some practical things you would tell her to do? So my number one thing would be try to do a devotional with your spouse. Um, my husband and I, I found one that was for um, military and there's, you know, ones out there. So take your pick or even read the Bible together. And, you know, when I first looked at, you know, the devotional we did, I was like, okay, we've been married, you know, 12, well, I guess at that time, 10 years. Um, you know, I should, I already know these answers, but it was really fun um, to go back and be able to talk about it together. And it was just one page that we did. We were able to do it at different times. We didn't have to, you know, sit on the phone or FaceTime and and read it together. You know, we read it when we had time and then we came and, and talked because you get so used to talking about what's going on, you know, with the kids and that is important. But you also need more. You need to create, be able to create that intimacy when there is no physical touch. 
um, you know, for months on end. And so that was something that definitely brought us together and Mm -hmm. made us so much stronger is praying together and being able to do, um, you know, those devotionals. So even if you, you know, your spouse isn't willing to do a devotional, share a verse with them. You know, there's still encouragement. There's so many places in this day and age to find, um, encouragement and to be able to create that intimacy because my husband um you know when he was downrange he was so mission focused and so mission ready and that's great because you know if you know something were you know to happen overseas um I want him to be that way I want him to be able to rely on you know that training that's been instilled in him but I'm not there with him and you know I I have feelings and he doesn't understand, you know, the loneliness um, that I'm going through because he has people that he can relate to, you know, on the deployment and that are doing the same, Mm -hmm. you know, mission. He's not in my shoes, even though, you know, he knows how our kids act and, you know, misbehave, (laughs) Um, you know, those daily things of being a single parent and doing the dishes every single day and, you know, mopping by (laughs) yourself and not having, you know, any, um, any help. And so that truly, um, was a blessing to us to be yeah. able to do that together. It gave you another point. It gave you a point of connection. Absolutely. Instead of talking about, well, this is my life over here and right. this is your life over there. It gave you a point of connection that this is both of our lives because we have this faith right. no matter where we are. Yes. And it was something positive because, you know, normally you do go to your spouse and, you know, they get all the complaints, you know, <laughs> sure. they get, oh, yeah. you know, you know, he's failing on this paper or, you know, whatever mm-hmm. it is, it's so easy to get caught up in the negativity and sure. just complain to them that it's nice to have that encouragement and be able to lift, you oh. know, each other up. Yeah. For the woman out there who, you know, she's just, she's so overwhelmed. She's so tired. The idea of even you know, trying something new, going somewhere new, meeting someone new, just feels so daunting to her. Um, What, what encouragement, what hope would you give her? So first I, I would read your Bible because God will meet you wherever you need him. And sometimes, you know, you open up your Bible and you're like, okay, I don't understand this. Or like, what, you know, what am I supposed to be learning from this? Um, but to be able to find, you know, those different passages that are encouraging and that do speak to you. Um, but there's also so many resources like the chapel or mops or, you know, the church, um, spouses group, your key spouse. Um, there should be a key spouse for every squadron. They should be calling the spouse um, during deployment or when they first move, they'll be able to, you know, offer different resources of different areas of housing to live. Um, and so really... I know it's hard to take that step out and, you know, when your cup is so dry to go out of the house, you know, to meet people. Mm -hmm. But my encouragement is to go and to try it. Um, Mm -hmm. There's so many times that I hear like, I have no friends. Well, you have to go, you have to find people. You have to go, you know, look for those relationships. And, you know, you may meet someone and be friends for a little while and meet someone else that you just, you know, you connect with more, but you have to put yourself out there. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to um, make yourself available Absolutely. for people to meet you. Yes. Um, so you you talked a lot about the church and Bible study and, and different parachurch ministries. Um, on the flip side, um, as a as someone not in the military, as, as a Christian woman out there watching, what are some pra- what's some practical advice you can give us? How can we make an effort to help our male spouses so they're not feeling lonely, they're not feeling alone, they're not feeling isolated? Um, what can we do? What should we do? And what should we not do? <laughs> okay, not. Um, the not, that's easy. Um, I think being available to spouses, to be able to just listen. The worst thing are those articles that you know what you signed up for or pretending that you know what it's like or even someone who has been through deployment um, before I I don't try to one up someone, you know, with the experiences because everyone handles everything so differently. Um, But it's very hard for me even to ask for help and I know different resources out there and so I think on that relational side text someone call someone 
make effort to get in touch with them because a lot of times, even though you say like, oh, I'm here, they're not going to call you. They need yeah. you to, you know, to, um, to initiate it. To initiate it. Absolutely. So just saying, hey, we know your husband's across the world for six right. months. If you need something, give us a call. Right. We're just bringing actually, meals. Just actually picking up the phone and yes. just saying, hey, I was thinking about you today. Um, you know, do you want to grab coffee or right. can I bring you a meal? Or Yes, just absolutely. Taking the initiative yeah. is really what you're saying. Yes. I mean, yeah. if you can offer, you know, a couple hours, you know, a stay-at-home mom, a couple hours to watch kids so you can go to the grocery store, bury yourself. Yeah. I know there's, you know, apps, click lists that make it nice that you can order, yeah. but I like going grocery shopping. <laughs> um, so yeah. without a toddler, sure, uh, you know, sure. watch a child for, you know, a few hours or yes, make meals, especially once they they leave initially mm -hmm. or like a week into it when there's that transition yeah. um, time that kind of week two and three is kind of really when it hits you of like, okay, the initial like shock factor has worn off. Like, how am I going to do this? You know, that yeah. fear yeah. Um, comes into play or, you know, going with them. Some people don't like to leave their kids. So going with them to get coffee or McDonald's while their kid can play and just having yeah. um, those conversations to be able yeah. to open up um, and be genuine yeah. and real. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And that's what we all need, right? Absolutely. We just need authentic people yes. willing to do life with us, yep. right? But okay. especially when you have that real sense of aloneness because right. you're navigating life alone, really. Yep. So thank you. Thank you for sharing your struggle, being authentic about some of the hard parts of military life and helping us love you better um, because I think uh, we all just so appreciate the fact that you are out there serving our country and we want to love you well. We don't always know how. We don't even always occur to us. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today, friend. I hope you were encouraged by Shana's story. And if you are a mill spouse, we would love to hear your story. So please feel free to comment. And if you are watching this today and you are saying to yourself, I just don't really, I don't even have a Bible. I don't know what Shana is talking about. We would certainly invite you to visit our website at ericawigginhorn.com where you can find out more about unexplainable Jesus and how he meets us in our deepest needs, the way Shana was talking about uh, with us here today. If you know a Mill spouse, please share this video and encourage them, like it, subscribe, uh, come back for more. We have unexplainable stories every week happening right here. Um, but most of all, friend, what we pray that you know is that while life may often throw the unexpected at us, unexplainable Jesus is always more than enough. Thank you and God bless.